Uh, we start with breaking news. Uh, European Union leaders have uh, agreed in the last hour to open EU membership negotiations with Ukraine. The announcement comes despite uh, Hungarian promises to block such a decision. Ukrainian uh, President Vladimir Zelensky has described the move as a victory for Ukraine and all of Europe. Leaders at the two-day summit in Brussels announced they will also open accession talks with Moldova and grant candidate status to Georgia. Let's go through this then with our correspondent Jack Parrock in Brussels. Uh, Jack, let's concentrate mainly on Ukraine and just talk us through the significance of this decision. Well, it's really significant, but Phil, honestly, we've seen some high drama here at the European Council Summit here in Brussels. We weren't expecting this decision to some, come so quickly. The European Council President, Charles Michel, tweeted to say that they decided to open accession negotiations with Ukraine and Moldova. Now, I have it on good authority that when that decision was made inside the meeting room of the 27 EU leaders, that actually the Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, who was threatening a veto over this issue, which has been the big story of this summit, that he actually wasn't in the room when they made that decision. We don't know exactly what this means, whether that's possible for this agreement to go forward. Subsequently, we had a video released by the Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban on his Facebook saying that the Hungarian position hadn't changed and that he was still against the accession talks opening uh, with Ukraine. So we don't know whether Orban excused himself so that they could make that decision, whether the EU leaders tried to push that decision through while he was outside of the room. After it all happened, Charles Michel, the EU Council president who's in charge of these summits, he came down into the room, a huddle of journalists around him, the size of which I've never seen in my decade here in Brussels, and said essentially that they've made this decision and that they will now continue to talk about the EU budget, which is the next subject on their agenda. You can imagine that the questions are flying. He didn't take any questions, Charles Michel. He just continued uh, on and went back into the summit room. We are going to have to try and find, find out exactly what has happened here, whether Orban has decided to remove his veto, veto, what has pushed him to do so, and why he wasn't there in the room when that decision was made. And, and just so we're absolutely clear uh, on, on this, um, without Orban's, without Hungary's yes on this, can, I mean, much is made of the, the need for consensus and unanimity within um, the, the European Union, but can they do this without Hungary? The suggestion would be that it needs all EU member states to say yes. That's my understanding, that accession talks need all countries to agree. Whether that means that it can just move ahead without one country saying yes by not being in the room, I have to tell you, Phil, I don't know. And I think a lot of people here in this room that have followed EU discussions for a long time also don't know. We're trying to find out exactly what this right. means within the treaties. I think the, the assumption is that it can move forward, uh, but we have to wait and see. We understand that Viktor Orban is going to come out and do a briefing and see what happens there. But at the moment, I just don't have the answer to that question for you. OK, this is all very exciting. Um, DW correspondent Jack Parrock in Brussels. Thank you so much.